Cygnus X1. Cygnus. For the star to become a black hole at the end of its life, it should be three yeah. times larger than the sun. At the center of our Milky Way galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole that is a million times heavier than the sun. What? Are you teasing me? Some black holes rotate at the speed of 1,000 revolutions per second. I thought this was your light. Okay, the black hole is your cool and light. Have you ever thought of what happens to stars during their lives? All stars are born huge and very hot. As they live and die, they become smaller and cooler. At the end, a star becomes so tiny, it is called a black hole because it sucks in all the energy around it. It works like a giant cosmic vacuum. It uses gravity to pull in anything around it. Be it comets, asteroids, planets, or even rays of light. A black hole is so powerful, it can even change the flow of time. Time near a black hole is much slower than on Earth. It is impossible to see a black hole, but scientists use special tools to look for them and have found about a thousand so far. One of them is next to a constellation called Cygnus and is called Cygnus X1. Guys, yeah, I want to see more. Zodiacal constellations are the 12 constellations that the sun passes through during the year. Of the 88 celestial constellations, 47 were known to ancient people. There is no place on Earth where you could view all the constellations at once. The sky is divided into imaginary pieces called constellations. Looking at these triangles and points, the ancients imagined the characters of their favorite myths. Because of Earth's rotation around its axis, the constellations at night do not stand still, but quietly float across the sky. Let's imagine that the Earth is a cavern of a cosmic carousel, and at its center sits a luminous ball, the sun. If you pass on this slow carousel for a year, we notice that some constellations we see in the fall, others in winter, and different ones in spring and summer. Our planet is thought to be divided along the equator in the northern and southern hemispheres, and each of them, too, has their own starry sky. In the northern hemisphere, you can always see the mysterious Cassiopeia, and in the southern hemisphere, it is difficult to miss the Southern Cross constellation, which has been a guide for many sailors. Ursa Major. Yeah, Ursa Major is the third biggest constellation. Yeah, it's its seven scared. bright stars make the Big Dipper. At the handle's bent, there is a star called Mizar, and next to it, Alcor. In ancient times, people used to check their eyesight with this star. The Big Dipper and Polaris are on the flag of Alaska. Alaska? I don't live in Alaska. Alaska. 
Have you seen how many stars there are in the night sky? No. To remember them, literally in Delhi there are so many stars. People divided them into What's groups, constellations, and gave them names. One of the most well-known constellations is called Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. It means larger bear in Latin. You can easily find it by seven bright stars in the shape of a dipper with a long handle. These seven bright and 200 less bright stars in this part of the sky make up the constellation. According to an ancient Greek legend, there was a girl called Callisto who was turned into a bear because she was so beautiful it made a goddess jealous. When Zeus found out about it, he put her up into the sky to save her from hunters. Besides Ursa Major, there are 87 other constellations. Hi, Bhopala. Okay, guys. This is Sylvia. Okay, that's cool. What is this? We can get the freedom. Taurus. Taurus, nobody cares. Bellatrix. Bellatrix. Bellatrix is a white blue giant that has a temperature of 21,000 degrees. In ancient times, Bellatrix was one of the 57 stars used for navigation. Bellatrix is a relatively young star of only 10 million years. That's young, all right. Now, are we done? And now what? I'm not sure Do I have to like see all of it? Okay, I will see you next time. Okay, guys, I just found the Orion. The meteor shower Orionids appears twice a year in this constellation. Okay. If you draw a straight line yeah. through Orion's belt, you will see Aldebaran in the west and Sirius in the east. Okay. The legend says that Orion was bitten by a scorpion and after death, he came to the sky. Dun, dun, dun. The Orion constellation is on the celestial equator which means that it is visible from both northern and southern hemispheres. It is easy to find it by three lined up stars, the famous Orion's Belt. According to ancient Greek myth, Orion was an unsurpassed hunter. He was very handsome, so tall that people called him a giant. In addition, he is the son of Poseidon, the god of water, and therefore inherited the ability to walk on water. The Orion constellation has many bright stars. Two of them are Betelgeuse and Rigel, real giants next to our sun. The constellation of Orion is also known for what is inside it. Even with the naked eye, you can see the swirling clouds of nascent stars, luminous gas, and dust such as the Great Nebula of Orion. Hi, Bibo, Bola! Hello? Okay, guys, this is a Which is further from us? Hold it. No! Which... Okay, guys, let me go back here. Which is further from us? Hold it. How is it further? Which constellation has more stars? Which one is a natural satellite of the Earth? Which star is larger? Which constellation is only visible in the Northern Hemisphere? No! Well, we just finished the game. So, see you in the next episode. <laughs>
I'm done with all of it, and here's it. So we we'll check out this in a lot. Now we check out everything. So bye guys, see next video, and he this is again. Bye, see you in the next episode. Yeah.